Hey guys, on today's show, a tale of two radios once again. This time, the 991A versus the 7300. I own both. I recently purchased the 7300. And I want to kind of go over why I did that, what, what prodded me to do these things, and what I like and dislike about both. So that's right here, right now on Ham Radio for Non-Techies. Hey guys, welcome back. Like I said, I'm going to be discussing the 7300 versus the 991 today because I have both radios. I purchased both radios. And there was reasons why I bought the 7300 recently, and I'm using that now for specific reasons. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. This is Ham Radio for Non-Techies. I try to bring you guys uh, good information on ham radio and simplify the hobby. So if you're interested in getting into it and think it's too technical, my channel is designed to help take all that technical gobbledygook out of it and kind of interpret it into English so you can come in and enjoy the hobby. So let's get right to it. So like I said, guys, uh, last month for my birthday, I received a uh, ICOM 7300 as one of my gifts. And uh, there was a reason behind doing that. So a little backstory. You know, I got my technician in February of 2021. Got my general a month later. And then my kid came in and took his uh, technician when I got my general. Then a couple months later, he got his general. Well, he was in need of a decent radio. And I was like, well, look, you know, you could pick up a 991 and have everything. But if you really think you're going to be doing more HF, then maybe separate them out. Maybe if you want to do more VHF, UHF in your truck while you're running around and traveling and stuff, go get a FTM 400, throw that in your truck. You got that that those bands covered. Uh, and then maybe have like a base station that does only HF. So he, I, I suggested a 7300. He went out and picked it up. And uh, the unfortunate side of it, he didn't use it as much as I would if I'd spent that kind of money on a radio. So one night when he was at work, I uh, kind of stole his radio <laughs> and uh, put it in my shack and fired it up. And I just, I was just playing around, just seeing what, what it does. I'd watched a couple of videos on it and knew my, you know, kind of what, what to do around the whole thing. And I noticed immediately, and this is all using, keep in mind, when I'm talking about the, to these two radios, I'm using the same equipment, same power supply, same antenna, same cables. Everything's exactly the same. The only difference is the, which radio I'm operating at the time. The 7300 picked up stations that the 991 couldn't hear. And that's kind of ridiculous to me, being that they're both very similar in build, but one picked up weaker stations than the, you know, the, the 7300 picked up weaker stations that the 991 couldn't hear. So that kind of sealed the deal for me. It's like, you know what? I really want to get, I want to maximize my reach to people. And uh, so I, I, I put in, you know, uh, the idea that I wanted a 7300 and I got one. Okay, so hopping over to my desktop here, I have this little presentation for us. And uh, the first thing I want to discuss is, well, here's obviously the two radios. Um, let's just do a couple side-by-side -side comparisons real quick. Uh, 991 does VHF, UHF, and HF. I, the 7300 just says HF. They both do 100 watts power output, uh, except that there's 50 watts max on the on VHF, UHF, and 991. Uh, modes are pretty much similar. You get a couple extra digital modes with the uh, 991. You don't get with the icon with the 7300. Uh, band filters. Okay, so here's our, one of our first major differences, and this is from the research that I did. When you're getting, when you're receiving a signal on the 7300, it goes through 15 different filters before it reaches your speaker and reaches your ears. Uh, band filters are kind of lacking. Uh, if there are, if, if the filters that are on the 991, you have to kind of hunt around for and dig in for. Everything's right on the front for the, the 7300. They both have antenna tuners. They both have color touch screens. One's uh, the 7300 is obviously larger and more touchy, screeny stuff than the uh, than the 991. Um, and the waterfall displays, you know, on the on the 991, you got a smaller waterfall display. It's not adjustable. You're very limited on how you can control the look and feel. Which goes into that next uh, that next point there, whereas on the 7300 you have a much larger screen. You can adjust the, uh, the 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 waterfall display, the size, the colors, how it looks, how it feels, all this kind of stuff. So you have much more control over these things. So real quick, if you look at this first video here, I'm showing you the 7300, and you can see that you know, everything's right at your fingertips. You're right there. You just you're, you're going in and going out. You can expand things. You can change out. The, you can change to a scope. You want to see scope settings. Or you can go back into your uh, into your uh, or, or actually you can go to your meter settings and then go back into scope. 
And then if you look at this next video here, you're seeing the 70, uh, the uh, 991, and you're kind of stuck with what you got. And if I want to go into change anything, I can go down and go to the menus. But like I said, there's like 154 menu items that I got to sit there and mess with while I'm either trying to get a station to come in and possibly losing it before I get a chance to hone in on, on the signal. So, I, I mean, you know, there, there are disadvantages to the 991. And it's just, it's plain and simple. The ease of use on the 7300, I think, is way, way better. Um, all your filter buttons are right there in the front. You have the multi knobs that not only turn, but you push them in, and that little sub menu will pop up, and you're able to tweak out certain things on whatever you're whatever you're playing with to get those signals to come in and maybe hone in on those signals. Uh, I really like that feature, and I really wish that I'd had something similar to that on the 991. And the problem, you know, part of the problem was when I was getting into all this stuff, when I was getting into radio. A, I have no ham radio outlet stores or any kind of uh, store, any kind of ham radio suppliers anywhere nearby. So I couldn't exactly drive up and go into a store and play with these radios. And some of you might be in very similar situations. You're out in the stick somewhere or there's not a ham radio uh, menu, uh, supplier somewhere nearby. And you're kind of stuck with whatever you see on, on YouTube or whatever you hear from people talking about. But honestly, the tactile feel and and and, and how the how the ic7300 functions works better for me than it does on the 991 not to say a 991 doesn't have its place so let's keep let's keep going here the pros and cons of both these radios uh the menu system like i said i think is difficult to use until you get used to it i'm still having to go back and and uh uh refer to either videos or the manual to find things i want to change in tune the menu system on the 7300, much easier. It's all right there. It's very clear and concise. Click, click, click. You're done. Um, easy to change bands and modes on both radios. That's pretty much equal. Uh, like I said, the 991, using this, using, this is, again, my situation and the equipment that I'm using. The 991 does not pick up some of the weaker stations that the 7300 does. Uh, the 991, however, is a true shack in the box. All mode, all band. And uh, the 7300 is HF only. I do like the larger screen and more display options on the 7300. I like the fact that filter controls are up front, easy to find in the 7300, and very easy to adjust, whereas I have to go into menus and hunt around and try to find the filters if there are any on the 991. Uh, the VFO knob, I love the VFO knob feature. There's a feature on the 991 where you have a tension, it's like a tension knob, and you turn it a certain way, it puts tension on the VFO knob, so if you want to spin really fast, you can go. Do, you can get to something real quick, or you can make it a lot stiffer if you're just trying to maybe fine-tune a station in. What I do like about the 7300, though, it's got something similar. If you start spinning the VFO knob really fast, it'll it'll respond to that and start blasting through the, uh, through the frequencies, and you can slow down to kind of fine-tune them however you want. But you also have an option on there where you can touch a certain part of the frequency on the screen of the 7300 and really hone in or just skip over the uh, the, the second decimal point of the frequency and just go into the, you know, 7.300, 7.301, 7.302. You have ways of, of uh, manipulating that all to, all to touch your fingers right on the thing without going in any submenus for any of that. So that's really kind of cool. I like using the 991. It's very easy to use for FT8 cable, USB driver, and software. And I'm sure it's probably very similar to 7300, but since I already had the 991 set up for FT8, I'm not really trying to bother with doing it with the 7300 just yet. Uh, I'm very used to how I am able to tune and manipulate the 991 to get my stations in on, on FT8 and make contacts on there. Uh, of course, you know, like I said, the uh, 7300 is not VHF, UHF. Uh, the multi knobs again. You know, I've already said this once or twice so far. The multi knobs, the front of the, front of the radio, are very easily, are very good for easily accessible modifications to things. And uh, I really wish that the uh, 991 had waterfall controls and expandability like the 7300. Uh, and the final thing is, is because I do, because I'm getting into Morse code now. The uh, 991 has one advantage over the 7300, which is you have a connection for your your paddle or your or your uh, your Morse code key on, right on the front of the radio. It's right there, right above the headphones. 
Whereas on the 7300, this is on the back, you got to kind of hunt for it. So you got your radio somewhere like I got mine. I got to kind of dig back there and reach over it and find it and plug it in. So, you know, that, that may or may not be a big deal for some people, especially if you're not doing CW, what do you care, right? Uh, so what's the bottom line? The bottom line is I like both radios. Um, I use both radios every single day. I do prefer my 991 for VHF, UHF, and FT8. And that might be kind of a, you know, maybe saying, well, that's kind of a waste of having an HF radio if you only use for FT8. But yeah, well, look at it as if something happened to my 7300, I got a backup HF radio that maybe at this point in time won't pick up as many of the weaker signals, but I still have access to HF. So we're cool there. But my 7300 is definitely my number one go-to for HF, hands down. Uh, now, when I was deciding between the two, at the time, I was only a technician with limited knowledge and limited privileges on HF. And after upgrading my license, I realized I needed more and more of pretty much everything. Needed more antennas, needed more of this, more of that. So that kind of prodded me. But at the time, and I, I knew this, I, I, I heard a lot of the other people out there that do reviews on the radios. And, you know, I did extensive research trying to figure out which one I wanted to get. And I heard a lot of people saying, get the 7300, get the 7300. Well, I thought I knew better. And I decided, well, I want an all band. I want a, I want a one size fits all solution. It didn't really work out that way. I mean, it is the 991 is a all band, all mode radio, but I like the features and the stuff that I'm doing with the 7300 so much better on HF than I did on the 991. And it picks up spaces better. I don't, I don't know why. I mean, I did RFI search in my house recently. And we shut off all the breakers. And I come to find out that the plug that I've got my radio station set up in is actually on its own separate breaker. Don't know how that happened. Because uh, everything else is wired in this house by whatever nine-year-old built this place back in 76. But I still have a lot of RFI coming in. I haven't really determined where it's coming from yet. I don't know if my neighbors are running a nuclear plant next door or something. But whatever's going on, you know, it, it's, it's causing RFI. And then at nighttime, I guess things settle down. And I'm able to uh, really get in there and get on my stations and stuff. Uh, so the menu system on the 7300 was very easy to find and navigate without reading the manual. And everything was right there at my fingertips quite literally. I was able to pick up on using the features and operating a lot quicker than on the 991. Like I said, I'm still referring to videos and still referring to the manuals to find information on how to use my 991 nine months into owning the damn thing. Um, the sound quality... I will say the sound quality on both radios is excellent, and that's my opinion. I mean, you can go get external speakers, but I do find that sound quality on both radios is really, really good. And if you're looking for, you know, if you're looking for a shack in the box, the 991 may be your answer if you want to find something. But just keep in mind, there is no such thing as a be-all, end-all, as I found out. And it took me to it took me buying both radios to figure that out and finding things I did or didn't like about both. So, you know, if you want something to start off with, you know, a 991 will give you, it'll open up the world of ham radio to you in a full, uh, in the, you know, it'll open it fully to you. Um, now, if you think you'd be doing more HF than VHF, UHF, then I suggest going for the 7300. You know, um, you can't go wrong with either one. And honestly, if I had to do it all over again, I think my results would be very similar. I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these radios. So that's kind of the conclusion of this, guys. Uh, I think that if you're on the fence looking for a radio, you know, I get, I get you guys, some of you guys ask me questions about this. You ask me like, hey, you know, what radio should I get? I can only speculate based on my experiences and what I know. I don't know your situation. I don't know what you have around you. I mean, I, I've got repeaters all over the place here. So VHF, UHF is a pretty good option out here for me because I have those repeaters around. And I have, a you know, my antenna's 30 feet up in the air my VHF, UHF, so I'm able to use simplex and reach out at least 40, 50 miles. So for me, those options are good. I can only give you uh, suggestions based on my knowledge of these radios and stuff like that, but I don't know what your situation is. So you really got to do your research. You really have to know what you want the radio for. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to use it enough? Like I said, my son bought a 7300. He hardly uses it. You know, I, if you're not going to use it, don't buy it. Don't waste your money. So I, you got to you got to really look at your own situation, see how you want to operate, 
and see what you, what's available to you in your area or if you plan on moving at some point in time, you know, you, you, you'll have different options. But I'd say get the best radio you can afford. Don't cheap out on it. Get the best equipment you can afford or learn how to build stuff. You know, I, I have a couple of things on here. I'm building some antennas and stuff like that. And there's tons of other things online on YouTube that teach you these things. So find what's going to work best for you and your budget and your hope, your, your uh, aspirations for operating and buy your equipment around that criteria. I can sit here and give you ex or, uh, suggestions all day long. Doesn't make them right. So... Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up on the video if you liked it here today. If you have any questions or anything, please put them down in the comments. I'm always, I, I try to answer every single comment every day I get up and I spend the morning answering all your comments and stuff and suggestions. And sometimes you guys give me some cool suggestions for videos to make. So I do listen. I do give you guys, I, I like the feedback from the audience and I like to communicate with you. It's a two way street here, keeps this channel going, right? And I, you know, of course, thank you for your support of the channel and everything that I'm trying to do. Anyway, um, we'll catch up with you guys next time, and we'll just keep on going, keep on hamming and doing your thing. Anyway, this is KI5 MPL, Ham Radio for Non-Techies, and we are clear.